Good evening, everyone. I'm so glad to be here today. God has blessed us with another day so we can do better and learn about his holy word. That is the food that we're supposed to eat daily and through the day. But I want to start off with prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, our Lord and Savior, Lord, you are the Father of Abraham and Isaac and Jacob, Heavenly Father, and you are you have given us your son, Jesus Christ. Lord, all we have to do is believe upon him and have faith that he died on the cross for our sins. He was sinless. But Lord, you brought him into the world so we could have salvation if we believe in him. Because he is the light, he is the true light. And Lord, we thank you for allowing us to come together this evening just to break bread together and to learn of your word and and put the word out because you said man should not live by bread alone, but by every word to come out of mouth, come out of your mouth, heavenly Father. To see it out of your mouth. Because the, the scriptures say your word is uh, medicine for us when we get evil. It'll heal us up. And I believe that, Lord. Those who have faith in that, they will be healed. And they will be forgiven of their sins if they have faith in you, heavenly Father. So we thank you. And those who are listening tonight, those who are not saved and have not received you into their heart. Lord, I pray that they receive you into their heart and they learn the word tonight and so they can be free. And free from bondage. And Lord, we just thank you for everything that you have done for us in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And I just want to start with Psalms, the 23rd of Psalms. Because I'm talking about the, the shepherd. I'm still talking about the good shepherd. It says in the uh, 23rd Psalms, The Lord is my shepherd to feed and guide and shield me. And that's what Jesus does. He, he feeds us, he shields us, and guides us through his Holy Spirit if we will follow the Spirit of God. And that's a gift that he has uh, given us. It's the Holy Spirit. It says, he will let me lie down in green pastures. He will lead me beside the still, quiet waters. He refreshes and restores my soul, your life. And he leads me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Even though I walk through the sunless valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. He's always with us. Mm -hmm. A lot of times you hear people that come into church or somewhere like that and they say, I feel the Spirit of the Lord in here and He's in them all the time. They should always feel His presence because He watches over us and He protects us as it says here in the 23rd Psalms. He protects and your staff guides and comforts us and consoles us. And many times the Holy Spirit is telling us to do something but we don't want to do it. Uh, but he's always given us direction uh, what to do. It says, and, um, you prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies, and you have anointed and refreshed my head with oil. My cup overflows. And you got to believe that in your heart that you have a cup that he gave you that overflows. It's not going to go empty. And when he gives you that cup, he wants you to share his holy word with everyone. Uh, and a lot of people are thinking of money, but it's his holy word. That's why he came here. That's why John the Baptist came before Jesus, you know, to, to tell everybody about the light, the true light, Jesus Christ, and for them to repent of their sins. And these days, people are not repenting like they should, and this is the world is in a turmoil right now because they will not recognize God. They are rejecting God, and God is not pleased with that at all. And so a lot of their cups are going dry mm -hmm. uh, because they're dependent on the world. God said, do not love the world. You love me. He says in uh, Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, uh, a lot of people, they, uh, they don't realize the sin that they're doing in their life. And this is one of the, this is the first commandment. It's the sixth chapter, and uh, 
fifth verse it says, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and mind, with all your soul and with all your strength, your entire being, our whole self. So he's supposed to be on our mind and our heart. And then it says in these words, which I am commanding you today, shall be written on your heart and mind. And it's in there. But uh, what happens, we fail to recognize God. We, we don't reverence him. As it says in the 13th verse in that same chapter, you should fear only the Lord, your God. But we have fear of the world. You know, what people think about us. What they going to say about us. And we should have our mind on pleasing God. It says, you shall fear only the Lord your God, and you shall serve him with I feel reverence, pound, profound respect, and swear oaths by his name alone. So we, we need to know where all our help is coming from. And that, like I said in that sixth verse, in the same chapter of six, these words which I am commanding you today shall be written on your heart and mind. And he know they in there. It says, you shall teach them diligently to your children and pressing God's precepts on their minds, penetrating their hearts with his truth. And shall speak of them when you sit in your house and when you walk on the road and when you lie down and get up. So that means all the time that we should have uh, God in our hearts and, and do what he tells us to do. And it says here in the 16th verse in that same chapter, you shall not put the Lord your God to the test as testing him at Messiah. You shall diligently keep foremost in your thoughts and actively do the commandments of the Lord your God in his testimonies and statutes which he has commanded you. And you shall do what is right and good in the sight of the Lord so that it may be well with you, and that you may go in and possess the good land which the Lord swore to give to your father. See, he had already made promises to us, but see, we had to do what he tell us to do, and not uh, do what we want to do. And then if you go to John, because this is all about the shepherd, it's all about God, it's all about how good he is to us. Go to John the 13th chapter. That was that commandment that he's given us. And then when you go to John the 13th chapter, the 34th verse, it says, I am giving you a new commandment that you love one another just as I have loved you. So you too are to love one another. And see, when God loves us, it's Unconditional. Amen. You you don't have to love me because I done bought you something or gave you something. You you just supposed to love me. Amen. You know, just the way I am. And as you know, you come into church and you may not be like God wants you to be. See, we all be learning. He didn't took his a lot of patience on us. He said he extraordinarily patient with everyone because he don't want nobody to perish. Amen. So he know that it takes time to mature. You don't just get this way overnight. And says, so we got to love one another. And we read the other day when you were going over, how many times we had to forgive somebody? You know, when they... 70 times 7. 70 times 7. So we, we had to have forgiveness in our heart. That's another thing. Because when you pour that love in you, from that cup, it don't go dry. And if it, it does, and you and you can't forgive your brother, your mother, or sister, somebody, then, then you need to check yourself. Mm -hmm. As the young people say, before you wreck yourself. Mm -hmm. Because in the 35th verse it says, in John 13 chapter it says, By this everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you love and unselfish concern for one another. Mm -hmm. And we're supposed to seek the best for one another. Now go to Ezekiel, the 34th uh, chapter. Because I'm glad we have a good shepherd. I'm glad we have uh, our Lord and Savior, uh, Jesus Christ. Because if we didn't, uh, we would have uh, another type of shepherd that's just for herself. Fleecing the flock. 
And it says here in the 34th verse, chapter, excuse me. It says, the word of the Lord came to me, saying, Son of man, prophecy against the shepherds of Israel. And you can look at that even today. The different pastors and people over all these mega churches and over all, you know, all the flock. And uh, before I even get into that, I want to, want to stay in the same chapter 34 of Ezekiel, but go through the 31st verse. It says, for you, my flock, the flock of my pastor are men. So he's talking about men, women, and children when he's saying the flock. The flock of my pastor are men, and I am your God, says the, says the Lord God. So uh, going, th going through the first verse again, the second verse, now it says, Son of man, prophecy against the shepherds of Israel, prophecy and say to them, the spiritual shepherds, thus says the Lord God, Whoa, judgment is coming to the spiritual shepherds of Israel. Who have been feeding themselves should not the shepherds feed the flock and see what we are supposed to be doing you know in the churches or in your Bible studies or whatever we going through whatever way we serve in God whether it's on your job or whatever you're doing and your purpose for God because we all born here for a purpose mm -hmm. we are and it, it's what we're supposed to be doing is uh, feeding the flock the word. He wants us to give the word. And that's that's our very purpose of being here is to get the word out to the people. That's what he has impressed on our hearts. Because that's what you have to feed everyone is the word of God. Because the word of God gives you strength. And you don't have nothing. You shouldn't have no fear at all in you. Amen. Because it, it says in the uh, 27th Psalm, Go to Psalm 27. And we got to get this in us because uh, too many people are bit, us afraid and they're not serving the purpose of what God wants them to do because they say, I can't do that. I'm not, I'm not able. And the 23rd, uh, 27, excuse me, Psalm say, um, the Lord is my light. Jesus and my salvation whom shall I fear the Lord is the refuge and the fortress of my life whom shall I dread and sometimes before you get ready to do something you know God wants you to do you got to read his word because he strengthens you with his word Amen. and said and the wicked came against me to eat my flesh and my adversaries and my enemies, they stumbled and fell. That's what he'd do. He'd make them trip over their self and fall. Because, see, they're not in the light. They're in darkness. They're in this world, so they can't see like you and I see. Mm -hmm. And it says, though an army encamp against me, my heart will not fear. Because you know why? He has put that in your heart. It's in your mind. Sit there and do the running. If he's in your heart and in your mind, your whole being, then God is there. Amen. And you know nobody can do nothing to my Lord. Amen. And we don't have nothing to fear. It says, though war arise against me, even in this I'm confident, the one thing I've asked of the Lord and that I will seek, that I may dwell in the house of the Lord in his presence all the day of my life and mm -hmm. glaze on the beauty, the delightful, lovingness and the majestic grandeur of the Lord and to meditate in his temple. See, you you are the temple. Amen. And you let that word just meditate in you day and night and you, you would be feel like you are as high as you want to be. Like they may have an addiction for alcohol or drugs. I got an addiction for the Lord. All right. And I got to get the word in me to strengthen me so I can walk and do the things he would have me to do. Other than that, I'm stumbling around. <laughs> Blind, crippled, and crazy, and especially mm -hmm. afraid. Because I don't know where I'm going or what's going on. But when he is before you and he's shielding you, you don't mind walking. You be bold. 
Because you know nobody can't do nothing to you as long as you're following him. He, he's in front of you. It's when we try to hurry up and get around him. I got to have this right now. No, you're going to get it right now, all right. You had to wait. It says, for in the day of trouble, he will hide me in the shelter. See, he, he knows when trouble is coming your way. It says, in a secret place of his tent, he will hide me. He will lift me up on a rock. Mm -hmm. And now my head will be lifted up above my enemies around me. In his tent, I will offer sacrifices with shouts of joy. That's what he expects out of us. Now, you know, back in the Old Testament, they were burning. They was uh, 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 sacrificing sheep and goat and rams and things like that. What do you want from us is our praise. Amen. He want our praise. He want us to uh, be obedient because the scripture says it's better to be obedient than a sacrifice. Some people may say, I gave a hundred thousand dollars to the church. And I did this and I did that. But they may have stole the money. Hmm. We don't know where to get it from, but it wasn't no sacrifice for them. Mm -hmm. But to be obedient and do what he tell you to do. Sometimes you may get chastised for that. You know, doing something good for someone or something like that. And your friends or somebody, I wouldn't have did that for them. You just mm -hmm. a fool. You stupid. The way he did you, the way she did you. But see, we had that love in us. We can forgive people. And you can love people with kindness because good overrules evil. Amen. It overrules it. And it says, and so we'll be lifted up and we're going to be shouting with joy and singing praises to the Lord. Not to be seen by man, you know, marching in in a choir and everything with a robe and looking all. But the Lord just be saying, mm, mm, mm. And they're doing it now, but as soon as you leave, you just, just as full of hell. Mm. Talking bad to your mama, your daddy, your brother, or sister, you know, won't help nobody. You know, not showing no love in your heart. So that singing and stuff mm -hmm. they've been doing, it, it's not no praise to him. See, our obedience is what is a praise to him. That's when we worship in him. You worship in him. It says, hear, O Lord, when I cry aloud, be gracious and compassionate to me and answer me. When you say, say it, seek my face in prayer. Require my presence in your greatest need. My heart said to you, your face, O oh Lord, I seek on the authority of your word. Do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. See, God is merciful. We can mess up and he'll still turn around and forgive us because he's looking at our heart, the sincereness of our heart. He knows when we perpetrate a, a fraud, just doing crocodile tears. And you may be uh, praying, you say, just get on up. Because mm -hmm. I told you what to do, and you didn't do it. Mm -hmm. Now, when you do what I told you to do, then come on back. Because he's not going to tell us to do nothing we can't do. Amen. Because he prepared us. It says he already has planned and prepared everything before we even got here. We just had to stay in that path. You know, walking, but we all over here. And then be saying, I don't know why I don't have no money. I don't know why I lost my house. I don't know why I'm sick. I don't know what is going on. I feel like I'm going crazy. Mm -hmm. And you do be going crazy. Amen. And it says, do not hide your face from me. Do not turn your servant away in anger. You have been my help. Do not abandon me or leave me, O oh God, my Savior. Although my mother, my father, and my mother have abandoned me, yet the Lord will take me up, adopt me as a child. That's what we got to remember. We nothing but a child. Amen. Now, how are we going to tell God what to do? But many times, even when we pray, we try to tell him what to do. And do this, Lord, and do that, Lord. And here he has made the heavens and the earth. He already know what we need. And he's going to take care of us because he is the good shepherd. He loves us. Now go back to Ezekiel 34. It's all about the shepherd. Mm -hmm. Now he's talking in this, uh, the beginning of 34, about the spiritual shepherds that were not feeding the flock. See, Jesus 
God. See, we can't even get to, to God unless we go through Jesus. Okay. And so God uh, tells Jesus what to say and do. And then Jesus does it. Then he tells the Holy Spirit what he wants us to do and say. And so we have to do it. All our strength and everything comes from him. And God, he, we already said, he, we're supposed to have nothing before him. No idols, no nothing. No man, no woman, no child. It says in the third uh, verse here in 34, you eat the fat and the choice is meat and clothe yourselves with wool. You slaughter the best of the livestock, but you, don't, you do not feed the flock. That's man. You do not strengthen those who are weak. You have not healed the sick. You have not banished the crippled. You have not bought back those who go astray. They don't go out and get no part. You have not looked for the lost, but you have ruled them with force and balance. They were scattered because there was no shepherd, and when they were scattered, they became food for all the predators of a field. My flock wandered through all the mountains on every high hill. And this is the way people are wandering around now. They're wandering around. The flock is lost and scattered. Mm -hmm. Wandering around, they're scared, and they are predators for people. They're just taking everything they get. Mm. As soon as they get a little money or something, they figure out a way to take it. But see, we have a king. Mm -hmm. See, we have a king that is king of king and lord of lords. And he is our good shepherd. Mm -hmm. And so it says here, they just wandered through the mountains and every hill and the flock were scattered over all the face of the earth and no one searched and sought them out. Therefore, it says, you spiritual shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. As I live, says the Lord God, certainly because my flock has become prey, my flock has even become food for the predator of the field, for a lack of a shepherd. And my shepherds did not search for my flock, but rather the shepherds fed themselves and did not feed the flock. Therefore, you spiritual shepherds, hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord God, Behold, I am against the shepherds, and I demand my flock from them, and make them stop tending the flock so that the shepherds cannot feed themselves anymore. I will rescue my flock from their mouth, so they will not be, their, be, the, be for them food. That's amazing. Now go to uh, the 10th chapter of John. This is why God had to send a good shepherd. The 10th chapter of John says, I assure you and most solemnly say to you, he does not enter the door into the sheepfold, but finds, climbs up from some other place on a stone wall that is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep, the protector and provider. See, this is the good shepherd. Mm -hmm. It says the doorkeeper opens the gate for this man, and the sheep hear his voice and pay attention to it. And knowing that they listen, he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out to pasture. And that's the thing. If we say we're going to be with Christ, mm -hmm. and we say that we have received his Holy Spirit, then we need to be listening Amen. so we can be led. It said when Jesus uh, was baptized by John, the Holy Spirit came up on him like a dove. It was like a dove from heaven. And throughout that whole time after Jesus received the Spirit of God, he only was led completely by the Spirit. Amen. And see, we're supposed to be the same way. Mm -hmm. Led by the Spirit, listening yeah. and following and paying attention to everything He tells us to do. 
So we can't blame God like a lot of people do, you know, when something don't go right. They be saying, I'm angry with God. I'm, uh, he let me down. We, just then we read in Psalms 27, I never abandoned you. Mm -hmm. I never forsaken you. So he would never do that because his word is the truth. The truth and the light. So we have to listen. It says, and when he has bought all his own sheep outside, he walks ahead of them. So it's, it's a message in that. Mm -hmm. When you're following Christ, the word of God, you don't get ahead of him. You walk behind him because he is the one leading you. If you walk ahead of him, you may fall into anything. Mm -hmm. And if you're not careful, you'll be being led by the word, the world. And the world is in darkness. It cannot see. And so you end up in a ditch or dead or, you know, just in a terrible condition. But since he is the good shepherd, he's not going to be like the spiritual shepherds in the Old Testament. He's going to banish you up. Mm -hmm. If your leg is broke, he's going to fix it. If you're crippled, he's he going to straighten you out. He's going to fix you. He's not just going to abandon you and leave you. He'll heal you up. He said the, the, those shepherds wasn't healing anybody. Amen. They was just getting fat Amen. and eating everything for themselves and not worried about anyone else. So we had to, you know, be led by, uh, by the good shepherd. It says, and he walks ahead of them and the sheep follow him because they know his voice and recognize his call. And the only way you're going to recognize his voice and recognize his call, you got to stay in the word of God. Read the word of God. Get your strength. Get your knowledge from his holy word. So you will pay attention and know what's going on around you. The, the word of God will cleanse your heart, cleanse you up, and help you to see. It says they would never follow a stranger but will run away from him because they do not know the voice of strangers. That's why you can't call yourself being in the world one day and then with Christ another day. You gotta be all the way with the Lord, all the way with him. Because if you're not, you're gonna get caught up and you will be with some strangers and anything can happen to you then. And it says Jesus used this figure of speech with them but they did not understand what he was talking about. So Jesus, this is what he was talking with the Jewish people, and they were listening, you know, to what he was saying. And Jesus used this figure of speech with them again, but they didn't understand what he was talking about. So Jesus said it again. I assure you and most solemnly say to you, I am the door for the sheep leading to life. You can't even have life without him. Amen. Jesus represents life and light. Amen. And the world, Satan represents death. Amen. And so he had to say this to the Jews again, those that were non-believers, because they didn't know what he was talking about. And he said, and all who came before me as false messiahs, self-appointed leaders, and thieves and robbers, mm -hmm. but the true sheep did not hear them. Because they were not talking about the word of God. They were talking in a worldly way. Amen. And they wasn't talking about love and uh, seeking the best for one another. That's how you can tell if a person belonged to the Lord. Amen. Love is in them. Forgiveness is in them. Patience is in them. Joy is in them. Amen. And they're grateful to God. And they won't abandon you when you have a problem. They had helped Amen. you. And it says, I am the door. He says it again. Amen. Anyone who enters through me will be saved and will live forever and will go in and out freely and find pasture, spiritual security. And they are telling the truth. When you read the word of God and you read how faithful he is to us, how he won't abandon you, right? how he's so compassionate and kind to us, Mm -hmm. And forgive us all the time. 
He's forgiven us all the time, and he's merciful to us all the time. But the thing of it is, you have to be merciful. You have to be kind. You have to have a forgiving heart. All these things that God is, you become also. There's no way you can stay the same and be following Christ and talking about I love the Lord with all my heart, with all my might, with all my strength, with my entire being. When you do that, you no longer belong to yourself. Mm -hmm. You became Christ-like. You become just like him. And it says, and the thief comes only in order to steal, to kill, and destroy. I came that they may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the full, to the overflows. As I said in the Amen. 23rd Psalm, that cup overflows. Amen. Don't worry about it getting empty. That's why you got to read and search the scripture. When Elijah went to the, the widow woman, Mm -hmm. All she had was a little oil and flour, enough to make her son and her a cake. And she said, after I'm do, I do that, we're going to go somewhere and die. My, my. All she had was a little bit. Mm -hmm. And Elijah told the widow woman, he said, no, the Lord has told me to come to you and for you to bake me this cake. Mm -hmm. And uh, she was hesitant, but she went on and did it because the Lord had told her ahead of time. Amen. This, this is why we had to do what God tell us to do. Mm -hmm. She was worried about the cup going dry and the oil running out. But when she went on and did what God told her to do, mm -hmm. she made him a cake. And then she made more cakes for her and her son. Mm -hmm. And then she looked, it was more oil and Flour in the in the bowl, it just went on for for a long time. And, 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 and then uh the other widow, she was worried about um uh, her son being taken uh into slavery because she didn't have money to pay the their uh debt so and Elijah said to send him to get as many uh empty uh Glasses or bowls or containers, whatever he can get from the neighbors, just bring them. And they filled them up over and over. They were all filled up. Everything container they could get was full, and it was enough to pay off their debts, and they were, they were wealthy after that. Mm -hmm. But you got to do something. The young man in Arvin say, I'm not going to do nothing. I don't feel like it. <laughs> and, she, and she didn't say, I'm not going to make you nothing. It's just enough for me, myself, and I, my son. Mm -hmm. But she went on and was obedient. That's why I'm saying we had to be obedient, children. Mm -hmm. You can't tell the Lord, I just got a little bit, when he put that in there. See, God is over all nature. He's over all science. He's over the doctors and nurses. He can make something out of nothing. What you see around you is not what was made from that. It was made just by him speaking things into existence. Amen. And he can speak. And he'll tell you speak. And when he tell you to speak, you better speak. Mm -hmm. You know, tell the word to, to your neighbor and to your friends, wherever you work. When he tell you to say it, you better say it. Mm -hmm. Because I'm going to tell you, when you do what he tell you to do, he be so pleased. Which us, when we do what he tells us to do, then he's going to bless you. See, when you give, you receive. Mm -hmm. He'll bless you with good health. He'll bless you with good sense, strength, Amen. and knowledge, and carries you on to be afraid of nothing. Amen. But you got to follow him. Don't get in front of him. You'll get knocked down. And may not ever get up again like he told her. The man that was uh, laying by the Bethesda pool. Mm. He said, you want to walk? Mm -hmm. And the man said, yeah, but every time I want to get near the pool, nobody puts me in there when the angels uh, <laughs> stir the water. Everybody else get in there before me. And he said, get up and walk and carry your bed. And he got up and walked and carried it. And Jesus found him later. And mm -hmm. he told him, if, if, he said, if you... Uh, Sin anymore, something worse gonna come on. Mm -hmm. Sin no more. Sin no more. 
So we, we got something to do, children. We got to do what he tell us to do, not what you want to do. And at the 10th verse, again, it says, um, so we can have, and he came that we may have and enjoy life and have it in abundance to the poor, to it overflows. Mm -hmm. I am the good shepherd. And the good shepherd lays down his own life for his sheep. But the hard man, who merely serves for wages, who is neither the shepherd nor the owner of the sheep, mm -hmm. when he sees the wolf coming, deserts the flock, and runs away, and the wolf snatches the sheep, and scatters them. Mm. Now it's just something about my my Lord and Savior. He is so good uh, to us. It says here in the twenty seventh verse of this uh, John the tenth chapter. It says, um, actually, I should I should go up. Um, to the 25th verse, it says, Jesus answered them, I told you so, and yet you do not believe me. He's still talking to the Jewish people, God, his sheep. The works that I do in my Father's name testify concerning me. They are my credentials and evidence declaring who I am. But you do not believe me. So you do not trust and follow me. God wants us to trust and follow him. It said, because you are not my sheep. Okay, if you're not trusting Jesus and you're not following him, then you're not being fed, you're not being guided, and you are lacking everything. Mm -hmm. Poor as a church mouse. Mm. It said, um, because you are not my sheep. It said, but the sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. I know them. They follow me. And I give them eternal life, and they will never, ever, by any means, perish. See, those who belong to this world with Satan, you're going to die. You're going to perish. Mm -hmm. And says, and no one will ever snatch them out of my hand. As it already said up here in, the, in that one verse I had just read, in the 12th verse, how the sheep are scattered, and the, mm -hmm. the wolf is snatching the sheep and scattering but this verse uh, 28 said, no one will ever snatch them out of my hand. And my Father who has given them to me, God has given us to Jesus, is greater and mightier than all. And no one is able to snatch them out of the Father's hand. And I and the Father are one in essence and nature. And I'm telling you, the Jews were ready to stone him then. They were angry. And then go uh, go back to the 13th uh, verse in John the 10th chapter. It says, the man runs because he is a hard hand. You know, mm -hmm. like a lot of these preachers and different people that have all these uh, mega churches. Some of them, I'm not saying all, but God knows who they are. It says the man runs because he is a hard hand who serves only for wages. Mm -hmm. Want to get paid. Uh, it said for wages. And not concerned about the safety of the sheep. They just run around scattered and mm. leaving the church and not coming back. And they all broke up and all crippled up and, and mm -hmm. just sick and they won't heal nobody. Mm -hmm. It says I am the good shepherd, and I know without any doubt those who are my own and my own know me and have deep personal relationship with me. That means we love Jesus. Mm -hmm. As God said in, in the Deuteronomy, the sixth chapter, you shall love the, the Lord thy God with all your heart, with all your might, with all your strength mm -hmm. and mind, your entire being, so we connect it. It's real personal when you with when you with Jesus. And the Holy Spirit is in you because the Holy Spirit is only doing what Jesus tells him to do Amen. and say. And he's telling us the same thing. Amen. We are very informed. Very informed. He even says that in the scripture that 
Uh, I tell you everything. And you're no longer a servant. You are my friend. Amen. And he laid down his, his life for us. And the 15th verse, uh, that's what it says. The 15th verse says, even as the Father knows me and I know the Father, and lay down my very own life, sacrificing it for the benefit of the sheep. That's a good show. Mm -hmm. It said, I have other sheep beside these that are not of this foe. I will bring those also, and they will listen to my voice and pay attention to my call, and they will become one flock with one shepherd. Mm -hmm. He is the shepherd. Amen. It says, for this reason, the Father loves me, because I laid down my own life so that I may take it back. And no one takes it away from me, but I lay it down voluntarily. I am authorized and have power to lay it down and to, to give it up, and I'm authorized and have power to take it back. Mm -hmm. This command I have received from my father. Amen. Now I'm going to follow the good shepherd. This is a division of opinion, of opinion occurred of, again among the Jews because of his words. But see, they wasn't in the sheep, so they didn't understand. Mm -hmm. They were not his followers. Amen. And, uh, they were hateful. It says, and many of them said, he, he has a demon. Mm -hmm. He is a man insane. He raves and rambles. Why well, listen to him? And mm -hmm. others were saying, these are not the words and thoughts of one Go. possessed by a demon. Can a demon open the eyes of the blind? You and you went over that in our lesson on Tuesday, how Jesus uh, uh, had stooped down and got the dirt and spit in it and made an a ointment Amen. and put it on a man's eyes that had never That's seen what they were talking he was, about. He was born blind and he, he returned his sight to him. And again, I'm going to end up with this. Uh, I appreciate y'all being here. It says in the 27th uh, verse in the 10th chapter, the sheep that are my own hear my voice and listen to me. I know them and they follow me. We must follow him. And I give them eternal life and they will never ever by any means perish and no one will ever snatch them out of my hand. My father who has given them to me is greater and mightier than all. Mm. And no one is able to snatch them out of the father's hand. The, our Father is the creator of the heaven and the earth. And nobody can snatch us away. So we need to uh, continue in his holy word. Praise him as it says in the scripture with joy or singing. Mm -hmm. And uh, have, continue to have a personal relationship with God. He know whether or not you mean it or if you don't mean it. And those who are mean to be with Jesus and follow him. You don't have to worry about going without. Because it says in the 23rd uh, Psalms, and you got to believe it, and you got to pray on it, and just have faith and trust in God. The first verse says, The Lord is my shepherd to feed, to guide, and shield me. I shall not want. Amen. You don't have to want when you follow the Lord. And I thank you for your uh attention. I thank you for hearing his holy word and uh, I hope you continue to listen and we'll return back on Saturday about 12 noon and uh, we appreciate y'all listen. Get the word and get strong. Amen.